Applications of Interference by M. K. Srivast, Department of Physics, in Institute of Technology, Rurki, Uttarakhand. In this lecture, the last of the present series, we shall first discuss concepts like temporal coherence, coherence time, coherence length, spatial coherence, etcetera, and then consider some applications. Let us go back to the beginning of this series. You see, we have seen that for a stationary interference pattern, the two interfering coherent sources have to be obtained from the same original source. Now, the wave chains emitted by the usual monochromatic sources are of about 10 to the power minus 10 second duration. In terms of the length, they are a few centimeters. Now, this time and length they are called the coherence time tau c and coherence length l c respectively. You see, le let us consider Young's two hole experiment just to see what these things really mean. S is the basic source. S1 and S2 are the two holes forming a pair of coherent sources. Then the light is reaching the screen where the point P is there. R1 and R2 are the distances S1 P and S2 P. Now, if the path difference R1 minus R2 this difference between the sources and the point P on the screen is of order L c the coherence length or more the disturbances reaching the screen from the two sources will then correspond to different wave trains which do not have any definite phase relationship we know that and the result will be the fringe pattern will vanish. Now, we have seen that the contrast of the fringes decreases if the source is not emitting at a single frequency. I mean we are trying to look at this problem from a, a different point of view. Remember just now we have seen that if the path difference is more than the coherence length the phase relationship gets disturbed and the pattern vanishes. Now, here we are talking about the fact that if the source is not emitting at a single frequency, then again the contrast of the fringes decreases. And we again let us repeat this, this is an important point. When the path difference between the two interfering beams is 0 or it is very small, the different wavelength components produce fringes superimposed on one another and the contrast is good. So, there are two approaches to look at this problem under what situation the fringe pattern gets uh, I mean its, in, its uh, clarity decreases and it vanishes. You see on the other hand when the path difference has in, in, is increased the different wavelength components produce fringe patterns which are slightly displaced with respect to one another. We have seen that earlier and the fringe contrast becomes poorer. One can say that the poor fringe visibility for large optical path difference is due to the non monochromaticity of the light source. So, the purpose of this analysis is to point out the equivalence of the above two approaches. The vanishing of the pattern due to the non monochromaticity of the source or the path difference of the order of or exceeding 
coherence length. We want to study the equivalence of these two approaches. If we assume that the beam consists of all wavelengths lying between lambda and lambda plus delta lambda, delta lambda is the range of wavelengths, then the interference pattern produced by the wavelength lambda and the middle one of the range that is lambda plus delta lambda by 2 will disappear if this delta lambda by 2 is equal to lambda square by 4 d as shown earlier. We talked about that in the last lecture. Now, for each wavelength lying between the first interval lambda plus lambda delta lambda by 2 there will be a corresponding wavelength lying between the second interval lambda plus delta lambda by 2 and lambda plus delta lambda such that the minimum of one falls over the maxima of the other and making the fringes disappear. Thus for the path difference 2D equal to or greater than lambda square divided by delta lambda, the contrast of the fringes will become extremely poor. So, this is one way of looking at the problem. Now, we have seen that above, if the path difference exceeds the coherence length L c, you see R 2 minus R 1 in that figure the fringes are not observed. So, it thus follows that the spectral width delta lambda of the source will be given by delta lambda is of the order of lambda square divided by L c which is equal to lambda square divided by c into tau c. c into tau c is naturally equal to L c. Thus, the temporal coherence tau c of the beam is directly related to the spectral width delta lambda of the light source. This is a very interesting and important result. Now, you see we have considered coherence of two fields arriving at a particular point in space from a point source through two different optical paths. That is why we were talking about the path difference, we were talking about the, the coherence length, light coming from a prime source, but traveling to different optical paths. Now, let us consider coherence properties of the field associated with the finite dimensions of the source. So, source is no longer a, a point source. Again, consider Young's double hole experiments. You see, this is a very interesting experiment. You see, in this figure, S S prime is an extended incoherent source of linear dimensions L. Extended incoherent source means the various points of this extended source they have no phase relationship among themselves. Each is a independent point source. Now, this extended source S S prime it illuminates the holes S 1 and S 2 these will form a pair of coherent sources. Let us consider this path difference S prime S 2 and S prime S 1 from you see the point S is situated symmetrically S prime is not symmetrically situated with respect to S 1 and S 2. So, the path difference S prime S 2 minus S prime S 1 is equal to L d by A, d is the distance between the two holes S 1 and S 2, A is the distance between the source and the holes and we have assumed that A is naturally much larger than d or L and we have a screen P p prime O is the central point on the screen. Now, if the path difference this L d by A of the light reaching 
s 1 and s 2 from the point s prime of the extended source is equal to lambda then for every point on the source there is a point at a distance of a lambda upon 2 d which produces fringes which are shifted by half a fringe width which means maxima falling over a minima. The interference pattern will therefore not be observed. Thus, for an extended incoherent source, interference changes of good contrast will be observed only if L which is the dimensions of the extended source is very very small compared to A lambda by D. Let us think in terms of the angle. If theta is the angle subtended by the source extended source of dimensions L at the slits this theta is equal to L by A. So, the above condition now becomes that D should be very very small compared to lambda by theta. If on the other hand D is, is of this is of the same order the fringes will be of very poor contrast if d is of the order of lambda by theta. The above condition thus sets an upper limit on the separation of the two holes. This distance lambda by d gives the distance over which the beam may be assumed to be spatially coherent. So, for a given small d, for a given lambda over d, L w gives the maximum extent of the source. This is called the lateral coherence width. Let us now come to the applications. The interference with thin films has a very interesting and important application in reducing the reflectivity of lens surfaces. This is a very interesting application and a very important because all these optical instrument consist of a several lens components, several surfaces and naturally the reflectivity at each of the surfaces must be reduced to a minimum possible to avoid the overall loss of light. So, consider normal incidence from air refractive index n of a is equal to 1 on a medium of refractive index n g. Now, if a i, a r and a t are the amplitudes of the incident reflected and transmitted beams then they are related as follows a of r is equal to an a minus n g upon an a plus n g times a i and a t is equal to twice of n a upon n a plus n g times a i. So, in good quality optical instruments as I said earlier there are in general many air glass interfaces as the lenses used there consist of several individual lenses and the loss of intensity loss of overall loss of intensity due to these reflections can be quite severe and must be avoided, minimized. For example, the reflectivity of crown glass is using the above expression n a minus n g upon n a plus n g squared 1 minus 1.5 upon 1 plus 1 1.5 squared 0 0.04 4 percent of the incident light is reflected per reflection. For flint glass where the refractive index is 1.67 about 6.7 percent of the light is reflected at each surface. If we have a large number of surfaces the loss at the interfaces can be quite considerable. Now, in order to reduce these losses thin film interferometry is used. We know that if a film of refractive index n f which is intermediate between n a and n g 
N A is the refractive index of air, N G is that of the glass. If such a film of a material of refractive index N F is coated on the glass surface, on the lens surface, and its thickness T is given by 2 N F times T is equal to lambda by 2 that is T is equal to lambda by 4 times N F. Then for light of free wavelength lambda, free wavelength means wavelength in air, condition of destructive interference is satisfied and reflectivity thereby gets reduced. Say for a film of magnesium fluoride which is a transparent material of refractive index 1.38 and for a wavelength of 5000 angstroms, which roughly corresponds to the center of the visible spectrum, the thickness T is given by 0 0.9 into 10 raised to power minus 5 centimeters. So, if the lens surface is coated by a film of this thickness, it will reduce the reflectivity. But now, the important question is how to optimally choose the transparent material, I mean how to choose the, its refractive index N f for the film to be just to be which is to be coated, what is the best value for and how to choose the material. Consider this figure which shows the reflected and refracted beams from various surfaces, bottom is the glass it is coated by a non reflecting film of refractive index N f which is less than N g and the top is naturally air refractive index is 1. N f is intermediate between N a and N g. The thickness of the non reflecting film is d is equal to lambda upon 4 N f it is called a lambda by 4 film and the thickness of this film is d which is equal to lambda by 4 n f. Now, consider the ray 1 uh, is incident on the reflecting surface partly it is reflected which is the ray 2 partly goes through the reflect the coated film ray 3 reflected at the glass surface which is the reflected ray 4 and then ultimately comes out in air the ray 5. So, this is the situation the ray 1 top reflected ray 2 bottom reflected and comes out as ray 5. Now, what we would like here basically is that the intensity of these reflected rays this should be the minimum possible that is the interest. If A i now is the amplitude of the incident wave, then the amplitudes of the reflected and refracted waves corresponding to the rays 2 and 3 in the figure earlier, 2 is the one which is transmitted, 3 is the one which is reflected. So, N a minus N f upon N a plus N f that is the reflected one and 2 N A divided by N A plus N F times A I is the transmitted and the refracted goes in the coated material. We have assumed normal incidence because these relations are really valid for normal incidence. Now, the amplitude of the waves corresponding to the rays 4 and 5 they are 2 N A upon N A plus N F times n f minus n g upon n f plus n g times a i and for the ray 5 2 n a upon n a plus n f times another factor n f minus n g upon n f plus n g times 2 n f upon n f plus n a times a i. Now, for a complete destructive interference that is the ideal situation. The waves corresponding to rays 2 and 5 should have the same amplitude. You see the ray 
2 is which was reflected first time from the top surface and reflected and the ray 5 have come after reflection from the bottom. So, these two are in opposite phase we would like their amplitude should really be equal that is the ideal situation that is n a minus n f upon n a plus n f times a i that is the amplitude of the ray 2 and 2 n a upon n a plus n f and the factor n f minus n g upon n f plus n g multiplied by another factor 2 n f upon n f plus n a times a i. Now, in this expression the product first and the third factors 4 times n a n f upon n a plus n f squared is very nearly equal to unity. For example, for n a is equal to 1 and n f equal to 1.4 this factor is equal to 0 0.97 almost equal to 1. So, let us take it equal to 1. So, if we use this then the above condition simplifies to n a minus n f divided by n a plus n f is equal to <coughs> n f minus n g divided by n f plus n g and this on simplification leads to a very simple condition that n f should be the geometric mean between n a and n g. This is the optimal condition to choose the material for the coating. If the first medium is air then n a is equal to 1 and with uh, n g equal to 1.66 which this is for the dense flint glass then n f should be 1.29. And with n g equal to 1.5 which is for the crown glass n f should be 1.22. Now, the refractive index of magnesium fluoride is 1.38 not very different from these optimal values, but anyway for a lambda by 4 n f film of magnesium fluoride the reflectivity will be about this factor n a minus n f upon n a plus n f this is subtract from this n f minus n g upon n f plus n g whole squared for n a equal to 1 and n f equal to 1.38 which is for the magnesium fluoride and n g equal to 1.5 which is for the crown glass the reflectivity will be about 1.3 percent. In the absence of the film remember we have seen that the reflectivity was about 4 percent. For the dense flint glass whose reflective index is 1.66 the reflectivity which was about 6.7 percent now gets reduced to 0.46 percent. Now, one thing should be noted the film is non reflecting only for a particular wavelength where we have carried out the calculations this wavelength is usually taken to be equal to 5000 angstroms about the middle of the visible spectrum. For a polychromatic light the films non reflecting property will be falling off when lambda is greater or less than the above value where the calculations have been done. However, the effect is not serious for crown glass the reflectivity rises by about 0.5 percent as one goes either to the red or the violet end of the spectrum. Another observation is that we should use a lambda by 4 thick film and not 3 lambda by 4 or 5 lambda by 4 although these films also give destructive interference for the chosen wavelength. This is because for a lambda by 4 and thick film the reduction in the non reflecting property is minimum and therefore, that is the best choice to be used. 
Okay, so with this we have come uh, to the end of this series of lectures. Hope you enjoyed them. Thank you.